Good morning, students. Today, we are going to start our study on vitamins. So we just finished water, and now we're going to move on to one of our other nutrients that we're gonna talk about, which is vitamins. So um, go ahead and, if you will, uh, go ahead and find your note sheet that is located in Teams under Assignments. And you're going to be able to type in these notes um, while watching the video. So if you can figure out how to split your screen, go ahead and do so, so that you can have the video on one side and then you can have the paper on the other to type. So just take a moment, pause if you need to, try to figure out how to get both available so that you can take notes for today. Okay, so we know that vitamins are considered an essential nutrient, okay? But what are vitamins? Vitamins are organic compounds, which means they have carbon present, and they are needed for normal body function, body growth, and maintenance. Vitamins are not a source of calories. So when we take vitamins, there are no calories within vitamins themselves. So if they do not have calories, they do not provide us with inner, any energy. They also um, instead provide and become part of our body's structure. Vitamins are known as cofactors. They don't do anything by themselves. They enable the body or allow the body to use the energy that is provided from carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Now, there are going to be 13 vitamins in all that our body needs to be able to function properly. To keep those 13 vitamins straight, we classify them into two different groups. First, we have the fat-soluble vitamins, and then we have the water-soluble vitamins. Fat-soluble vitamins are going to be stored in the liver and fatty tissues. These are not readily excreted from the body. Fat-soluble vitamins can be stored in the body and include vitamins A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. You can help remember the fat-soluble vitamins by remembering the acronym, all dogs eat kale. So vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. These vitamins are not required daily as the body can build up stores of these vitamins in the liver and fatty tissue for future use. So our bodies can hold on to these fat soluble vitamins and use them when they need them. Now, fat soluble vitamins, so vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K, are mainly found in fatty foods and animal products. On the other hand, we have water-soluble vitamins. Water-soluble vitamins travel in the blood and are stored in small or limited amounts. Water-soluble means that they dissolve in water which makes water-soluble vitamins pass easily into the bloodstream during digestion. Once they have undergone the digestion process, they are readily excreted from the body through urine. So water-soluble vitamins do not stay or store in, inside of our bodies. 
it passes through. An example of a water-soluble vitamin is going to be vitamin C. Other examples are vitamins of water-soluble vitamins are the vitamin B group, which we will look at more in just a moment. Water-soluble vitamins are relatively cheap to add to food. We can find a lot of water-soluble vitamins added to cereals. When studying vitamins, it is important for us to keep in mind that vitamins were first named with the letters of the alphabet. Later, scientists gave each vitamin a chemical name as well. When referring to health, lots of people tend to misuse what is a vitamin versus what is an antioxidant. An antioxidant is a substance that fights off free radicals in our bodies. Free radicals are compounds within our bodies that may lead to chronic disease and or are involved in cell tissue damage. All vitamins and minerals are not antioxidants. Examples of vitamins that contain antioxidants are vitamin C and vitamin E. So it is important to note the difference that vitamins and minerals are not antioxidants. However, some vitamins can contain antioxidants within them. The first vitamins we are going to explore are going to be the B vitamins. There are several different B vitamins. There is B1, B2, B3, B6, and B12. All B vitamins help the body to release energy from carbohydrates. And most of this function is on a cellular level. The B1 vitamin is known as thiamine. Thiamine is the chemical name for vitamin B1. Vitamin B1 or thiamine has a specific function in the body. It helps to convert carbohydrates to energy. It is going to help stabilize the appetite and it is going to promote growth and good muscle tone. The food sources for thiamine include pork, fish, liver, nuts, whole grain, or enriched breads and cereals. Now, if a person has a deficiency, meaning they do not get enough of thiamine, it can result in beriberi. It can also result in fatigue, nausea, and depression. So we know that vitamin B1, which is thiamine, does have and cause negative effects if there is not enough in a person's diet. Next, we have vitamin B2, which is known as riboflavin. Riboflavin is a key to our metabolism. It also helps with the formation of antibodies and red blood cells. The food sources of riboflavin include whole grains, dairy, eggs, and meat. A deficiency of riboflavin or vitamin B2 can lead to inflammation of the lips and mouth as well as dry, scaly scalp. Vitamin B3 is known as niacin. Niacin helps our body with energy production. It also helps with our skin, nerves, and digestive system. The food sources for niacin are going to be meat, poultry, liver, eggs, 
brown rice, baked potatoes, fish, milk, and whole grain foods. Now, if a person does not get enough niacin or vitamin B3 in their diet, they can develop a deficiency which is known as pellagra. This is a disease that causes skin lesions and mental and digestive issues and can be very serious. Other deficiencies are rare such as diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and even death. So niacin is super important for our bodies and your body will show signs of deficiency if the body does not receive enough vitamin B3, which is niacin. Vitamin B5 is also known as panthophenic acid, okay? Vitamin B5 is going to manufacture red blood cells. It's also going to create sex and stress-related hormones that are produced in our adrenal glands. And they are also going to contribute to healthy skin. The food sources of vitamins B5 include brewer's yeast, corn, cauliflower, kale, broccoli, tomatoes, avocados, legumes, lentils, egg yolks, and beef. If someone has a deficiency, which means they do not get enough of vitamin B5, okay, it can lead to depression, fatigue, and insomnia. However, deficiencies in B5 are quite rare. Continuing with the B vitamins, we have vitamin B6, known as pyridoxine. Vitamin B6 is essential for many different bodily functions. It helps maintain normal nerve function. It helps reduce muscle spasms, cramps, and numbness. It helps our bodies make hemoglobin and hemoglobin is important because it carries oxygen in the red blood cells to the tissues in the body. It also helps our bodies break down protein. The more protein that you eat, the more B6 you will need in your body. B6 also keeps blood sugar, which is known as glucose, in normal healthy ranges. Food sources for vitamin B6 includes avocado, banana, beef, pork, potatoes, and whole grains. Now, if a person does not get enough B6, it can lead to deficiency problems, such as anemia. It can also lead to nervousness and insomnia. It can lead to a loss of muscle control and muscle weakness in extreme cases, arm and leg cramps, as well as water retention. Vitamin B7 is known as biotin. Biotin is essential to help and aid in fatty and amino, fatty and amino acid development. It also makes our skin, hair, and nails stronger. If you've ever went to Walmart and you have uh, asked somebody, what can you do to make your hair grow quicker or to make your nails stronger, they're probably going to recommend biotin because it does have a strengthening in those amino acids. So food sources of biotin include liver, yeast, leafy greens, nuts, and grains. If a person does not have enough biotin, it can lead to dry skin, depression, and fatigue. Our next to last B vitamin is known as B9, or more commonly known as folate or folic acid. Folate has a very specific body function. 
It helps create and copy DNA and RNA. Folate or folic acid is especially important during pregnancy. Remember from previous classes, we talked about how folic acid or folate helps prevent neural tube defects in a developing fetus. Food sources of folate or folic acid include liver, beans, leafy greens, sunflower seeds, and avocados. Now, if a person, specifically a pregnant woman, who does not get enough folate or folic acid in her diet during early pregnancy, there is an increase in the risk that the fetus or the child will be born with birth defects that affect the spinal cord and brain. If a woman is not pregnant or for men, a deficiency in folate or folic acid can cause nausea and fatigue. We have reached the last B vitamin, which is B12. Its scientific name is cobalamine. It helps produce DNA and produce red blood cells. And food sources of cobalamine are fish, shellfish, meat, eggs, and dairy. And deficiencies can include fatigue, weight loss, depression, and pale skin. Now let's discuss vitamin A. Vitamin A is also known as retinol. When we are taking vitamin A and ingesting it, we typically refer to it as vitamin A. But vitamin A is also a key skincare ingredient and an anti-aging ingredient that we typically call a retinol. So what does vitamin A do inside of our bodies, okay? We get our vitamin A from beta carotene and our bodies take the beta carotene that we eat and it, then our body converts it into vitamin A. Vitamin A helps promote good vision. It also helps promote healthy skin. That's why dermatologists will typically write a person who is aging a prescription for retinol and what that will do is it fights the free radicals on their skin to promote healthy skin. It also helps with cell turnover. So when you get to a certain point in the aging process, you might want to go to a dermatologist and ask them if they will give you a retinoid cream or a retinol cream to help with the cell turnover and to promote healthy skin. When we ingest vitamin A, it also helps with the growth and maintenance of our bones, teeth, and cell structure. Now, vitamin A can be found in liver, orange and yellow fruits and vegetables. If you've ever heard of the eat your carrots because carrots help you see better, that's absolutely true because carrots have beta carotene in them. Beta carotene is what gives carrots their orange appearance. Okay. Butter also has vitamin A as well as eggs. Now, if someone has a vitamin A deficiency, it can lead to night blindness as well as having a lowered immune system or a weakened immune system that lowers their resistance to infection. Now we have vitamin C. Vitamin C is probably the most thought of vitamin when we mention vitamins. The scientific name for vitamin C is called ascorbic acid. The body function of vitamin C is to boost our immune system. So when we get sick or have a cold, a lot of uh, people will say, take some vitamin C because it is an immune system booster. It also strengthens our skin and our bones and it is a powerful antioxidant. And if you remember back, antioxidants help fight free radicals, which can cause 
chronic illnesses, and other health issues. It also has a role in our body of forming collagen. Collagen in our body, okay, has a lot of function, okay, but when we think of collagen, we mostly think of elasticity in our skin. Do you remember a while back when I had you do the pinch test for testing for dehydration? So if you take your hand and you pinch it and it goes back quickly, that's because you have a lot of collagen, okay, in your skin that allows it to go back quickly. Well, as you age, we know that that collagen breaks down and the skin is slower to move or spread back out. Food sources of vitamin C include oranges, citrus fruits, kiwi, red bell peppers, and strawberries. Now, vitamin C, if you do not get enough of it, you can develop a disease known as scurvy, okay? So scurvy is when you have a severe deficiency of vitamin C. Okay, some symptoms of that include bleeding gums and opening of previously healed wounds. Now, scurvy was actually very common among pirates and people making long journeys across the open seas. So when someone would go on a ship, they might not have access to fresh fruits or citrus fruits Okay, because that would not be something that would be available. So a lot of times people would develop scurvy and it was quite common and it could be deadly in some cases if a person went long enough without access to these types of foods. So vitamin C is very important. Vitamin D is also an important vitamin. It is essential for building and maintaining bones and teeth. It is responsible for the absorption and utilization of calcium. We know that our bodies need calcium, which is a mineral, for the strength of our bones and teeth. But if we do not have enough vitamin D, our body can't quite break down and absorb the calcium that we need. That's why you will commonly find uh, in the grocery store when we go to buy milk, we know that milk and dairy products are a source of calcium, but a lot of times you will see vitamin D added to our milk. So if you go in the store, in the grocery store and find the red cap, that it'll say vitamin D milk because the vitamin D is added to help our bodies absorb that calcium. Vitamin D may also boost our immune system. Sources of vitamin D include the sun. Now we do get a certain amount of vitamin D from the sun and no matter what anybody tells you about a tanning bed that is absolutely false, you cannot get vitamin D from a tanning bed or sun lamp. Fish is also a source of vitamin D. Eggs mushrooms, and fortified dairy. So it's not something that is found naturally in dairy. It is going to be fortified or added. Now, if a, um, if a person specifically does not get enough vitamin D, there are a couple of deficiencies that can form. One of those is rickets, which is commonly found in children, okay? You also have um, some osteoporosis issues in adults or osteomalformations. And both of these are the softening of the bones from a lack of vitamin D. Remember, if we don't have vitamin D in our diet, our body can't use the calcium that it gets. So it's important to remember that vitamin D and calcium go hand in hand. They're like salt and pepper. You don't separate them. Next, we have vitamin E. Vitamin E serves many different bodily functions, okay? It helps maintain antioxidants that protect cells in the body, 
Vitamin E is an important part of our immune system. It supports our eyes, brain, and heart. It is important to the red blood cells, our muscles, and other tissues. And vitamin E also acts as a blood thinner. Okay, so if a person, especially an older person, is on any type of blood thinning medication, it is important for them to tell their doctor that they are taking a vitamin E supplement, and that is with any vitamin and mineral. If a person is going to the doctor and is taking any type of prescription medications, it is also important to tell their doctor if they are taking any vitamin or mineral supplements. It's extremely important because vitamins and minerals can interact with prescription and over-the-counter medications. So food sources of vitamin E include oils, almonds, nuts, eggs, bell peppers, and leafy greens. Now, a vitamin E deficiencies are typically rare. However, some vitamin E deficiencies are related to sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is an anemia that is caused because of a malformation within red blood cells, okay? And it does happen primarily, and we see it more common in African-American males than we do in any other ethnicity, okay? Uh, sickle cell anemia or vitamin E deficiencies can cause problems with muscular or nerve function. It can also lead, lead to retinopathy which is damage to the retina of the eye. So vitamin E is super important um, in our... Lastly, we have vitamin K. Vitamin K allows our blood to clot properly. So if we cut ourselves, vitamin K will help clot our blood to prevent us from continuing to bleed, okay? It is important to our bones, it, vitamin K works hand in hand with vitamin D, and vitamin K is mostly made in the intestines. And food sources of vitamin K include leafy greens, cheese, kiwi, avocado, and parsley. Deficiencies of vitamin K can lead to anemia. It can also lead to uh, something called coagulopathy, which is a bleeding disorder. So if someone is not able to clot or stop bleeding, um, a small cut can become a very serious issue.